40 percent or something going on. feeling like what sorry 40 percent of like full energy what i think with my full energy who knows 40 percent is low <laughs> <laughs> So, Bentley. Cool. Ooh. Hey, yo. Well, how are you doing? Was that uh, Bentley? I, I was just checking in a little bit, Bentley. So, okay. yeah, yeah. Bentley and I, uh, Peter. Yeah, I'm. I've I've been sick like. Um, I mean, I don't know, Jerry, how, how sick you've been, but we, we've been sick in this household and it wasn't COVID in our case, but, um, uh, so I'm catching up, uh, and getting stuff done. So not, not much interesting stuff going on. Sorry about that. Yeah. Getting sick is not fun. And Pete, did you want to check in? Uh, I'm doing well. Knock on wood. Nice modulo how the earth is going on yeah um some cool stuff on math of wiki do chat gpt is cool yeah have, the boss. has there been any um has there been any activity on the project with matthew to um there there thing? has been a little bit yeah um uh i'm going to type on line 15 in the docs um uh i i don't know that there's a bunch of like external stuff um we had some we haven't we haven't moved too much um but uh Uh, the website is now on a on a reasonably permanent uh, URL tftmap.massive.wiki. Oh, cool! Um, and uh, hoping to have phase zero done next week sometime. I think. Well, that looks really good. Yeah, it's yeah. Is that this a, is, uh, a the, mock-up the, or is that a driven by data or what's it's that? a mock-up total mock-up yeah by matthew good work um i guess there uh, we there's a let me see if there's anything useful on today's massive wiki wednesday notes um Nothing from nothing, nothing on TFT map project. Do the cool stuff. Maybe I'll. Yeah, or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to sort of say where the map has gotten to or where it's stuck or what needs to happen next? Um. Yeah, and you know, actually, I I should maybe talk a little bit about Massive Wiki, and, and since I'm talking, twenty five uh, minutes of focus. Um, the robots are with us. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, I forgot to turn it off. <laughs> uh, if you let me see if I can share my browser. And, uh, browser. Um. uh so um i i have to mention this because it's a, it was a big deal even though it looks like a tiny thing um i i hacked uh the massive wiki uh theme to have this little uh notice bar um which was which was a whole big thing but um anyway um and then separately I've talked with I've been talking with Jonathan Sand a little bit about um massive wiki, wiki themes in general and stuff. So I know way more about um well I mean I know way more about CSS frameworks than I used to and 
it's it's all sadness and disappointment no um, that's so bad <clears throat> is that ribbon a part of the standard default theme or is that something you have to choose and add or it's it's hacked into it's not part of the, the standard theme although you're welcome to copy it if you if you really want it yeah the other the other thing that this made me realize was uh the, this theme is originally from bulma and um the thing that keeps the the top bar which is nice and doesn't scroll the thing that keeps that from bumping into the content is actually um, just having this content have a the CSS equivalent of break, 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 or paragraph, paragraph, paragraph. Um, it's just a static like thing. Um, really? So the and this made a difference when you make this thing small. I don't know if this is an example of it, but anyway, this this thing used to wrap, um, and then it would actually overrun the content down here, and so. This this version of this theme has a little bit more space bumping down. The whole thing's terrible. Um, and then I you know I went to look at a bunch of sites uh, because we're talking about doing fancy things. We have another another theme where there's a static sidebar that scroll that doesn't <clears throat> scroll while the, the content scrolls. I was looking at Wikipedia and stuff, and you know there's a bunch of websites that you know the the sidebar scrolls, the top matter scrolls. We, we're trying too hard, is my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you also know. have to be careful with mobile when you're doing that. Uh, it's when you scroll or when you get fancy with? When you get fancy. Scrolling, the, leaving, leaving it scroll is better for mobile. Yeah, the the fancy stuff works. Um, not that, no, this is interfering with positive but there's a hamburger menu there the the themes that i've been using for massive wiki are, are mobile friendly even the one with the sidebar that doesn't scroll but then of course the sidebar takes up too much well, uh, h space and yeah i mean the header not scrolling right now you lose about a fifth of your mobile phone yeah, so. yeah. On a side wanted... i've never been able to to make the hypothesis bar not render there i try yeah, I haven't tried that. That's another another whole thing. Yeah, I tried like you know the way it's documented, and it's just not working for me. But you know, so it's there as well in the Agora. I will uh, I will try to um, I will try to fix it as well, and I'm sure I will run into the same thing as you. Yeah, or not, and then I'll copy your solution. That would be awesome. And um, Pete, also, if the menu ever gets wide enough, I don't know if you like it switching to a hamburger or a menu button um but all that stuff i, I do a lot of so if you ever need help with css okay like thank you I making it sticky at the top to where it doesn't you don't have to pad or it automatically adjusts there's yep. some things i've done um between menu bars you. and hamburgers i'm getting a little hungry <laughs> that's a uh that's that's a helpful belly um because we I, i've had a lot of thought obviously about it. Um, so, uh, anyway, the only reason I could talk about that little thing is because I can click here. Um, so if you look at the project plan, uh, version zero is basically a mock-up, um, uh, of stuff. And so, um, I can show you the air table. Um, uh we have basically uh matthew says we're pretty close to phase zero all we have to do is you know pete needs to fill in his contact information and a few more things kind of and we're good to go um so uh so while i've got the screen uh let me also talk about massive wiki when massive wiki um uh, I've got a new thing called Tech Notes, um, which is a little bit like an RFC or or a, a PEP um, from Python. Um, and the first one was about moving to. Um, I think it's in here someplace. Um, moving to um, or moving off of GitHub, I guess. Uh, so. It looks like mass, massive wiki stuff. We're going to move code and, and wikis largely over to Codeberg. Um, I don't see a good link here, but and this the link to this HackMD is this this HackMD happened just like an hour ago. So 
it's not yet at a permanent location and this this isn't going to stay at this location so mm -hmm. uh, a little bit later in the call i'll move this to a permanent page and then put the link to it um but uh so first note was about um, moving off of github maybe onto codeberg uh thought a lot about different you know different other things um the next one is about something called permanent versions uh which is conceptually to me it, it's similar to permalinks um and what permalinks did for blogs um the the kind of the the short the short thing is a wiki is supposed to be bubbling and burbling and changing all the time and so it's always felt weird to me to to point into you know give a a, a link to a wiki page because if if it's a, wiki, a healthy wiki you know it will have been composted away from what it was and maybe even subsumed into other pages by the time you you know click on it so this is a proposal plan to um you know have a, a process for um making a, a permanent version of the page um and Matthew was really uh, thoughtful with some comments this morning about you know different ways to do that, and and it made me realize that there are use cases where you want to have a more formal document management kind of thing, and you can do that in Massive Wiki. So for if you were doing a government um, government Massive Wiki, I think I can close this now because um, I can't see the screen very well. Um, uh, if you're doing a government version, you might have versioned pages and you know links between versions and stuff like that. Um, for more casual or more wiki use, um, I'm actually um, not expecting very fancy, you know, version like heavy-handed version management, which you can kind of get from the Git log. Um, uh, and I'm not really thinking about helping readers much with getting from this version to the next version to the next, or the previous version previous version previous version um uh, matthew was saying that gordon brenner is doing that with uh subconscious for instance um i so the permanent versions thing it's going to be like here's the way it was and uh if you want to find out more about this search around for you know uh, search around for different versions of this or, or things like that and in kind of thinking through that and talking to Matthew, um, part of what I hope, I guess part of what I hope for Massive Wiki and content in general is that it's going to morph and change and get copy and pasted in sections to all different kinds of places and all different things. And I think that's a beautiful and wonderful thing, even though it's not very database-y, you know, um, uh, write once, you know, and don't repeat yourself. Um, I really like that organic kind of combining and merging and changing and spreading. So that's part of what's under Massive Wiki. And then to compensate for that, to make it so that, uh, the, you know, I, I feel that way now. I didn't feel that way 30 years ago about information. I would be much more careful about con keeping sources and keeping track of what was going where. Nowadays, of course, we have text search and web search. That's pretty good, um, very good. So I don't worry too much about the about content getting loose. Um, I you know because you can always ask a bot to go find it. Um, and now watching Chat GPT this week, um, you know it's it's even more so. Um, it's like hey Chat Chat GPT, read this page or you know it's it's uh, the sentence. Check out this page. Can you tell me some of the the influences this you know that were part of this page and you know. In the future, we'll get a much richer and more vibrant, you know, description. Yeah, it looks like Pete kind of came up with some of this, I, you know, himself. Bill added some cool stuff that was pulled from, you know, this source and, you know, that that kind of thing. I think that's, you know, I I don't worry too much about very strict version management and and attribute management because I think search and AI is just going to get better and better and better and better. So. Brief, brief question. Uh, so I have a question, sorry. Um, go ahead. Go first. ahead, Jerry. I'll remember right. Okay. Go ahead. So um, so, so you mentioned the uh, how to version and uh, yeah, there was interesting thoughts, but I guess I didn't quite get what this is, what 
you want to target in massive wiki is it like uh, gonna be linked to a git commit an anchor or something that says like load this page in this commit or is it gonna be point in time um the latter okay makes sense so essentially um, you, you will pass some sort of like uh you want the version closest to a point in time run like a arbitrary and the system sort of finds the right uh point in history uh actually what i'm what i'm expecting to do um and this the the techno literally is still a little bit in draft mode and i, I finished that draft this morning i've been thinking about it for a few days so this might all change but um but what i'm thinking is going to happen is um i'm going to use the same publishing process that i do to make a website um, but i'm going to make a single html file mm -hmm. um and then uh, actually take a SHA-256, check some of that, and use that as the as the URL fragment for it, right. as, as the file name. So um, I kind of came up with that architecture intuitively, and then talking with Matthew, I realized a little bit more about why I was doing it. Matthew said, you know, in, in the blogging world, especially in the olden days, the old blog blogosphere, there was you could go back and edit a blog post to fix a typo or something like that or update a link but there was an unwritten code a code of ethics which was once i've made a blog post i'm not going to you know i'm here i'm saying well I, i'm confused about this thing you don't go in later and say i'm so smart about this topic you don't change the meaning of the post right and you don't mm -hmm. even edit it very much so um i'm i i was always weird it was always weird for me using a wiki as a blog because a wiki is changing all the time and it's a right. good thing right so um so i realized kind of what i want to do is make a snapshot point in time snapshot of the page in html probably rather than markdown and um because that'll be more kind of long term and more useful for more people um and then uh you know snapshot the sha 256 of it and then that's a way of essentially codifying that code of ethics that we used to have in the blogosphere. Um, and it's not that I, I really appreciate code of ethics more than I appreciate uh, like hard, you know, mathematical, precise, you know, right. firm things. But the code of ethics existed in the blogosphere. Um, it's not something that we have, you know, like globally in the web. It's not a, a common cultural convention that, you know, a web page won't change. So in a way that SHA-256 URL is a way of, of demonstrating to people for all time, whether or not, you know, they're of our culture or some subsequent culture, you know, hundreds of years from now, it's like, you know, when, when Pete says permanent version on a massive wiki, what it means is this is a point in time snapshot and I can actually confirm that by checking the hash. Interesting. Um, so, so you're, you're fingerprinting so the approach, it, it reminds me, it sounds like content-based addressing, no? What yeah. You're going for. It's like a, right? yeah. which is, I, well, I see the connection it's, to, no? It's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's um, kind of content-based addressing. It's, it's mm -hmm. similar to it, but it's actually for a particular reason. It's, it's right. for verification, verificability. Right. It's and, like a proof. Yeah, it's yeah. a proof. Um, I, you know, and it's funny. I, I. IPFS, of course, is it's content-based addressing, right? Yeah. So instead of SHA-256, I'm like, maybe I should use an IPFS content ID. It turns mm -hmm. out that um, the promise of IPFS content IDs is a little bit different than I thought. Given mm -hmm. a file, it's easy to, and and it's it's hard not to, it's easy to create different content IDs from the same file. It, it uh, depends on kind of the, the way you hash it and the way you um, coalesce it with uh, IPFS is made as a as a uh, file system more or less. So it actually doesn't prefer to, to store individual files. What it does is it puts the file in um, a data structure called the Unix FS, uh, Unix file system. Um, and then depending on chunking and stuff like that, the, the ID that comes out of that, you know, might be different depending on how you chunked it. So the it turns out that the IPFS promise is that if you have a content ID, you'll always be able to re retrieve the content. But it's not like a hash. It's not you know back. You can't do it backwards. Mm, um, so um, 
a little bit like content address file system, but it's really for verification and uh, and a proof. Um, uh, you said something else interesting, which was so the um, I'm wondering if it was like uh, uh, picking a hash out of the git git log. Right. Um, another thing in conversation with Matthew is like. I guess in my mind, at least, Massive Wiki has, has always had that idea of being able to point to a version, sometimes maybe Git, sometimes other, other tools. Git isn't necessarily part of Massive Wiki, versioning is. But um, it made me realize that for people like Matthew who aren't geeks, I need to, we need to, Massive Wiki needs to present a better interface to the Git log. Um, uh, because Matthew is still like, you know, oh, I'm going to save a, this version of this file as another file name in the wiki. And I'm like, yeah, you actually don't need to do that because it's all yeah. in the Git log. And he's, well, that, that's cool. But then if there's a thousand oh, commits, yeah, yeah. how do I search through a thousand commits for the interesting ones? And it's like, well, mm -hmm. there are actually tools for that, you know, Git blame or, you know, whatever. Exactly. Um, so it made me realize that we need to make it more of a first class operation for hmm. a non-technical person to say, give me the version history of this file or give me, you know, when did this when did this paragraph get introduced in the in the git history? And that's something that I can do because I, I I'm a geek, but everybody should be able to use, to do that. Just two quick comments about uh, so, uh, uh, the topic. One is like, and you probably consider this, but like I didn't quite get uh, uh, like exactly how the hash will be used. But the fact that you're hashing the HTML output, I guess that introduces a dependency on the particular rendering engine you're using, unless you're you plan to store the HTML for each version. Like you won't be able to like in the future rely on just having the hash to find the right version if you don't have the same engine, no? That's correct. My my intent is is actually to render the page and then save the HTML. Page. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. If you save it, that makes sense. So that's and, where, like, I guess, yeah, you could save it. And then the, the styling of that might break or something like that if it depends on external CSS files. Exactly. Like but that. they, they but yeah. the content should still be fine. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, Jerry, so you had a comment or a question? Uh, yeah. I, it was. Uh, you have to scroll quite a ways back in what we've been saying. I, I typed it partly in the in the chat, which is uh, Pete. Does a shift to Codeberg mean more complexity, less complexity, same same, just a different host? Uh, Codeberg is fairly analogous to GitHub, and actually, even the interface is is very familiar to a GitHub user. Um, so it's I think it's not as complete as GitHub, um, but otherwise, it's conceptually very similar. So it's basically a copy and paste files into a new set of directories, open an account, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So um, Codeberg is committed to always being uh, open, open friendly. Um, and they actually, they're, they're running on software called Git-T, uh, which has a storied history in itself. Um, uh, Git-T, uh, the, the Git-T project recently the, the maintainers uh, decided to incorporate uh, Git T Limited and and commercialize a little bit, um, start making money off of uh, consulting work. Um, that made the Codeberg people freak out a little bit. So they announced a fork of Git T. Um, right now it's a soft fork uh, called uh, Forgio. Um, the yo part is spelled uh, J O. Um, so that made me concerned a little bit. I, it made me feel a little bit uh, unhappy. But um, I, I talked to it with John Abbey, and he's like, "Actually, no, that's a good thing, Pete." <laughs> so, um, Git is itself is a fork of Gogs. Um, so there's a whole uh, fork, fork, you know, thing going on. <laughs> As a re recursive, re recursive forkitude. Um, it's it's kind of like when it, it's um my wife and i sometimes were watching rom-com movies and you know the one of the protagonists is a, a mistress of somebody and you know it's like you know oh and then i'll marry him you know when he he divorces his wife and it's like dude you know if he's cheating on his wife what makes you think you know so it's kind of the same thing with the forks you know yeah uh, <laughs> if you fork from somebody else you know that doesn't mean that you're not going to get forked yourself 
which is why we say fork. Um, I put a, two things up top, Gordon Brander and Paul Roney, which I'm happy to go to, but it's a change of topic. So I'll wait until everybody's done with whatever we're on here. Um, so on the, just to close on the anchoring, uh, so we, we discussed this at some point uh, for the hour and like, we did, I didn't implement anything. So there's no anchor, no version uh, uh, reference or anything yet. I was going to go by default by, with like the git hash, the, the commit. Then I thought, uh, and you're going back to the uh, how to, and this seems like an interesting side quest. I was, I wonder if someone has done this, it should be simple. Like take the git commit, uh, commits and like produce like you know three words or four words some mnemonic yep. the hash. yeah i think there's probably like general libraries that do that yeah and that will be you know then you could, you could say oh it's just like you know dice phone key your version yeah that's uh that's brilliant i like that a lot i'm not no, sure I mean, exactly when i would use it but <laughs> right, right. i like the idea of it yeah yeah, I mean, I guess it will make the, uh, you know, just use that anchor perhaps more like user friendly, but yeah, I don't know. And the other yep. things like I was thinking of point in time anchoring uh, at some point for this, where like, you know, there, there should be, uh, there will be a, a the reference step essentially, like uh, this I hint that, you know, you pass like a timestamp or like a date, and then the system finds the right version essentially for you. And then, uh, which sort of like has a nice property that it yields this trivial UI for navigating because you can just change the date and get a different version. Uh, I am also aware of at least one very, very large documentation system based on Marlon that supports uh, linking to a particular commit or head. And then you can just like, it has built in like, you know, show latest or show that version. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at, at some point uh, when I'm, really writing a massive wiki client rather than relying on other, other people's I, I'm going to be super interested in that kind of stuff helping you know helping people navigate get get history without being geeks right because of course then I think I would like anything time based uh, will be uh, you could have wiki to wiki interwiki interagora or whatever uh, links uh, that are sort of consistent you know like you could browse yeah. cross wiki, cross wiki. At the point yeah. in time. That's actually, um, yeah, I hadn't even thought about that as kind of a use case, but that's a, a, a great, um, great example. And uh, yeah, Gordon Brander uh, and Subconscious, no? Yes, yeah, Subconscious, exactly. Yeah. And I kind of want to know where, what you're thinking about him and subconscious because I talked with him on Monday when I was at Betaworks before I realized I was actually sick with COVID. Um, and he like he's really interested in maybe absorbing a piece of my brain data into Noosphere and figuring out what to do with it. Yeah. And he was like, like, got to talk, got to do this. And I'm thinking, is there a way to fold him into more of our collective work here? so that we can all learn from that and, and do something there. So that's, that's just a, a side note. Uh, and if he, and if he contacts me, I'll say, Hey, there's, there's a call you could join. And, you know, I, I think some of us would be interested here in, in how that works. Right. Yes. That sounds great. Yeah. Cool. And then, um, Paul Roney is the founder of cosmic and I did a, <clears throat> a podcast episode with him that I really, really like. He's very thoughtful. He's French. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and, he really loves computer history. So he, one of, one of the things he's kind of spinning out is the possibility of a podcast or a community or a something to talk about, um, for example, some of the early visionaries like JCR Licklider and uh, Vannevar Bush's Memex and all those kinds of things. What was the promise? What got fulfilled? What didn't get fulfilled? And how does that bridge to new tools? And what, you know, kind of honoring and, and offering newbies an on-ramp to the older visions of computing uh, and then making it relevant for today. Uh, and we had a really nice conversation over this. And I think, you know, he seems really energized about it. And I know that we have several humans who are really like Chris Aldrich loves uh, the history stuff. And some of us know a lot about it. So I just wanted to put that in front of the, the group as well.
that sounds very exciting. Cool. Yeah. Any other relevant topics for where we are? Um, I guess on the topic of of like uh, importing your rain, which is something I've been uh, like wanting to look at it a lot for a while. I just want to share that we do have now an hora for the fellowship the link up. Uh, which is just like uh, right now it's being served as a mirror of uh, well it's just like uh, the same content as the reference hour but I can empty it and like put whatever there um, and uh, yeah so I guess I just wanted to to share that so it's FOTL <laughs> for now uh, but you know we can use oh. any other uh, so let me yeah, and like uh, this is running containers, the new version of the, set, of the, the setup, so it's uh, easy to run many hours. And yeah, in, in general, like it could also be a composition, a, a composition of any, any number of Git repositories or sources. And uh, you know, I guess tying back into the uh, no sphere, of course, not, the no sphere they're developing is like technically uh, very advanced, you know, like completely different architecture, uh, IPFS based, and so on. Uh, uh, but uh, I would expect that the general problem of take an input in some format and produce some, uh, you know, pr produce like uh, transform it through a series of steps until it can be ingested into a null sphere. It will have like a common path, right, up to some point to some uh, perhaps intermediate exchange format uh, uh, that is common to many platforms. Like so, it could be you know go to Massive Wiki. Uh, of course, you, you could go into the fellowship in Agora or OGM or your own Agora. So I guess I'm interested in like trying to, to keep that in mind. And I don't know if that means uh, we we try to keep in mind like a, a common exchange format, like you know, or 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 at least we share. For example, like the so the idea behind the uh, current Agora architecture, which has like Agora Bridge as a separate component, is that uh, essentially. You know, if we have to pay the tax of, I don't know, like run a process so we can get data out of the rain, uh, then we, that, we do that once, right? We have a shared policy that just does that and produce like a, a common exchange format right. for one of those. Just sort of like, I mean, I would love, I would love to, uh, to keep this in mind, uh, not only because, you know, it could benefit uh, many projects uh, from the group, but also because like I, I want to avoid repeating, you know, the the, the, the uh, common pitfall of open source and so on, which is like we all end up in reinventing uh, the wheel too much and paying like uh, double or triple or info. You know? Totally agree. Um, one thing that came to mind while talking to Paul and telling him about Gordon Brander wanting to suck in some portion of my brain was that, and this might be interesting in bridging to your Agora, um, was that uh, we could take a couple degrees away from the link I just shared in the chat which is basically the link to those vision documents like Personal Dynamic Media by Alan Kay and uh, mm. Computer Lib Dream Machines by Ted Nelson and Engelbart's demo and, and so forth. Um, and use that as a starting piece of, a, st a starting web of, of content uh, to play with, to, to do with importing and then to tell stories around because th that would sort of serve three or four different purposes in different ways, and that might be a nice, just might be a nice topic to choose to uh, as a focal point. So just to think about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I wonder. We've got a project called Meme Brain, um, and um, we've got, which includes maybe Bentley and me and and Marc Antoine Parent. Um, we've got basically all of Jerry's brain in a Postgres database, um, where each row is a node. I would imagine. Um, so we already have that. Um, nice. I, I I also kind of wonder. I the there's a there's a an odd odd thing about Jerry's brain. Um, Jerry's brain is is almost. This one. The, uh, yeah, that too. Yeah, there's two. Um, uh, the way Jerry uses the brain, um, he only has node titles. Uh, he had, doesn't have node bodies, um, which which is good in some ways and bad in some ways. Um, 
but anyway, I, you know, representing it, I, thinking about representing in a standardized format, you know, I, it, um, a, a massive wiki page, uh, even, even the sections of a massive wiki page don't map great to, you know, nodes out of the brain, which don't map great probably to Rome nodes, which don't map great to, you know, mm -hmm. so I, I, one of, one of the challenges, I think the, our space has, you know, been dealing with for 30 years or whatever is everybody who's representing information represents a, a diff, a different shape of information. Um, so a Miro node is not the same as uh, the brain node. And so what we've been doing is I or sometimes sometimes we do lossy translations, but they're very lossy. Um, I don't know how to resolve that kind of. Yeah, I mean, I think this is where like the rubber hits the road. I think yeah. expression. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And um, I mean, I guess. Yeah, lossy. I think my preference will be like lossy uh, user friendly representations or lossy, you know, like lossy useful representations and thorough, but maybe inaccessible, like uh, lossless. But yes, how do you file? How do you file, like, say, like an Im image that doesn't have like a null mapping? Perhaps yeah. that means you need like a some level of indirection for like at least you know at least you have a resource ID always I guess even if it's just a random yeah. and then you can say well for anything that doesn't have a direct mapping go to the like backup database for mapping or yeah but I will be very interested in that I mean I'm not interested in a lot of details I'm I'm actually like <laughs> not detail like oriented I know it's, it's, it's obvious but like this seems very very like it needs to be solved essentially there's no other way. And like starting with like uh, so I, I guess you know like we have Jerry's brain as like in, in one in one uh, one side of the ring to put this some way, and like um, uh, and these other systems and I think that's a very nice base case to start with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I will personally be interested in any such uh, any any range from this group to put it some way. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. me too. Also to explore that diversity and. For example, like the the, the the more general thing I'm I think I'm most interested in is like how do like Jerry's uh, nodes map to uh, uh, Peter's and Bentley's? Yeah. Even how how do we find if there is no mapping, right? Or like uh, you know how do so how do they find that uh, relatedness or uh, that metric essentially of distance? Um, yeah. The the it's. It's a it's a tricky problem, and I and I'm not sure I share your optimism about being able to solve it. Um, uh, and uh, you know, I, I I think I think the solution is I don't know. I so I guess my my solution would be I wish there were an open source version of Jerry's brain, and then you know it and Massive Wiki could talk back and forth and link together. But you probably wouldn't you know you you wouldn't try try to translate one into the other. Um, dang, I distracted myself. Um, Jerry's, Jerry's brain is, is a great map, but it's, I, I guess it, it would be super easy. It's super easy to represent Jerry's brain as a massive wiki, but it's a very degenerate massive wiki. He's a data Thanks. term not a man <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Um, well i mean all, it, all what, uh, it, what it winds up looking like is a series of markdown files that have a title uh two-thirds of which have a url 98 percent of which contain no text of any kind right yeah. a and all and yeah. all of which have some yaml or some other metadata that says up down left this is what you'll locate near me but that's it i mean the, yeah. it, it, it's a degenerate wiki in the me, uh, massive wiki in the sense of it con contains no content that you that that you would normally refer to that way so so there's i guess i guess there's um under the under the quest of these things should interoperate there there is actually a simple way to make them interoperate it's very simple to convert jerry's brain to a massive wiki and i've done you know little ones um it's trivial but it's 
it's not very meaningful either. It, you know, so I, I can say that, oh yeah, I've represented, you know, parts of Jerry's brain in Massive Wiki. I could represent all of it trivially. It's, but that is not the same as I, I've done a useful mapping of it. But it's, but it's meaningful in the sense that you can have plugins to Obsidian that give you mapping capacities that aren't native to Obsidian that then let you see relationships or navigate through, you know, the connections. And exporting my brain content would give us yeah. the basis for, for picking up and then building a new map, a fresh map that mirrors how the brain does stuff. And uh, as you've heard 50 times from our conversations, I just need the simplest of things, up, down, left, and some kind of interaction model, and, and we're off and running. Right, it, right. It's, it's easy to, it, it's, it's a little bit like a trapdoor function. You know, it's, it's easy to move Jerry's brain content over to a massive wiki. But then if you ever want it back in the brain, you know, you can't do any massive wiki things with it. You're, you're totally right that you could use massive wiki or obsidian or whatever. You can use tools to do different things with the data once, you know, once it's in a format that, um, you know, that a, a mapper or whatever. So that's true. But I guess an, another observation that we've had playing around with Dre's brain is it's, until it's it, it uh, it's easy to do one way, um, mm -hmm. uh, it's a one -way kind of translation, but it's it's much a much harder problem to do it bidirectionally and you know annotate it in massive wiki and then bring it back into the brain in any reasonable way. The right. brain is is complicated. Also, it's not just the data format; it's also the fact that it's more closed. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but it's yeah, both things. It, it, I guess it, it, I was also interested in, in, I think we can have different goals here. And I know, Jerry, you mm -hmm. have the goals. So, uh, so uh, I can be sure, it's like, if we want to, like, for example, like Jerry's uh, brain in the context of like a wider knowledge graph, just could be adding a lot of value in that context. And perhaps yeah. that's the first thing. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. And also, it would be like, so sort of like having a search engine which like is upranking Jerry's brain all the time. Yeah. That seems interesting. Yeah. Uh, even if you don't solve point. the other way. So my apologies. I've got a. I'm going to shut down the the recording. You guys can all stay. Yeah. But, no, thank you. Uh, I've got to stop the recording so it saves it to my system. If one of you wants to keep recording, that'll work as well. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm.